Hi there. In the last video, we saw how to split the routing table into different routing tables, right? Using uh, VRF or virtual routing forwarding. And that was working as expected. And there are scenarios where you actually have to allow the communication between networks in different VRFs. And this is also referred to as to leaking routes into VRFs. And that's what we're going to see in this video. We have a similar scenario to the previous one. And we added another interface on Firewall 3. And the idea is to simulate a network on Firewall 3 that has to be reachable on the VRF uh, between firewall one and firewall two and let's say we have uh, servers okay DHCP server DNS server uh, the email server on firewall three and these services they have to be reachable on the network behind firewall two and recall that we can't at this moment because we have uh, a VRF in place so we will have to leak only the network 192.168.103 where those services are residing except for the network 192.168.102. Okay. So let's take a look at the current state of the network. So everything should be operational at this moment. I haven't enabled VRF yet as we can see the network 192 101 that's behind firewall 2 the network 192 168 102 and 103 and they are sitting behind firewall 3 and if we look at firewall 2 you should see that it has information about those subnets as well and if we look at firewall 3 we should see the same information as well we can see 192 168 101 and that's the subnet behind firewall 2. We can confirm reachability to those networks by using the CLI. And from firewall 2, I type uh, 192.168.102.1 and 103. That's successful. Recall that the policies are already in place and I'm allowing everything at this moment and I'm not using net we did this in the previous video so i recommend you to take a look at that but let's just take a sneak at it uh, that should be firewall policy so we're just allowing all the traffic on all interfaces we don't care about the policies at this moment so now let's begin by creating the vrfs to split the routing table between these two firewalls so start you actually do this on the firewall one so we have to go to config system interface we're going to edit port one and set the vrf to one two and we're going to edit the port two and set the vrf to one three and we're going to save this so now i have uh, multiple routing tables if we take a look routing table O, we have the default or global routing table we have the new routing table one two and one three and at this moment i should have lost uh reachability to the networks uh from firewall three so if i take a look at router info routing table oh i'm not receiving any bgp network to leak the subnets between different vrfs we're going to use vdom links i know we haven't covered vdom yet uh, but in short vdom has the same roles as the vrf so it allows to segment or to split the 40 gate into multiple 40 gates it's like we can have more than one 40 gate virtually on box uh we're going to talk more about vdom on the future videos 
but just try to understand the concept okay so we're going to take advantage of this VDOM feature to interconnect both VRFs. Okay, so we go to config system VDOM link and we're going to create a VDOM link and we'll name it uh, link 1213 and we're going to leave these with iPhone at the end and we're going to understand this in a moment and this has a limitation to the number of characters so that should be enough and we're going to save this we also have to allow uh, the overlapping of subnets because we're going to create a subnet to interconnect both VRFs and by default the FortiGate doesn't allow us to do that so we go to config system settings and we're going to set allow subnet overlap and we want to enable this feature okay with that in place we're going to place the VDOM link into the respective uh, VRF so we go to config system interface edit link so first we'll set the vrf to one two we'll set the vdom to be the root because we only have one vdom and we're going to set the ip to be one that is not being used anywhere in the network so we're going to choose 172.16.1.1 and we're going to use a slash 30 uh, because we only need two ips for this case and we want also allow ping for testing purpose and we have the other vdom link so that should be edit ping one and we're going to set the vrf to be on the vrf between firewall one and firewall three set the vdom to be root Set the IP to be 172.16.1.2.2 slash 30. We want to allow ping and that's it. Okay, so let's confirm that everything is okay. So that's the first link and the second one and it looks okay. Next, we're going to use a prefix list to match on the IP address that we want to leak between the VRFs. So we want to choose the network 192.168.103 coming from VRF 1.3 and also the transport uh, network and that's the 10, 102, 102 between firewall 1 and firewall 3. We also have to leak the network on firewall 2 192.168.102 because we want to allow the return traffic so let's begin by configuring the prefix list so prefix list we want to add it prefix list and we'll name it vrf12 and we want to config a row edit one and we'll set the prefix to 192.168.101 slash 24 we're going to save this and we want to add the second rule and that's going to be the transport uh subnet so set uh, prefix 10 101 101 4 we're going to save this and exit okay let's confirm so the prefixes that i want to match on vrf 12 will be the subnet behind firewall 2 and the subnet interconnecting firewall 1 and firewall 2 so we're going to do the same for firewall 3 so we're going to edit prefix list uh vrf actually yes that's vrf 13 and we're going to config the rule and the first will be set the prefix to be 192.168.103 that's the only subnet we want to leak from firewall 3 we're going to save this and it will too 
going to set the prefix to 10, 1, 2, 1, 2, 0, 10, 4. And we're going to save this. Just confirm everything is okay. See, okay, that's VRF12, the prefix, the interconnect subnet, and on VRF13, the local subnet on Pyro3 and the interconnect network. Okay, so next we're going to create a route map to match on this prefix list. So I'll go to configure router route map and we're going to name route map vrf12 we're going to config rule and the first rule will be that match ip address and what's the vrf the prefix list we created on vrf12 going to save this and let's take a look okay and we're going to add another route map route map vrf13 we're going to config a rule edit we're going to match on the prefix list that's not what i want and that is sensitive we want to match the prefix list for vrf13 we're going to save this okay and if we can confirm okay everything looks okay now we are going to match this route map on bgp so that we can leak those networks using the route map so we'll go to bgp and config vrf here we want to choose the source vrf and the destination vrf where we're going to leak the prefix so type edit what is the source vrf in this case we'll start with one two then we'll config the leak target and we're going to say the destination vrf will be uh one three and we're going to set the route map to be the route map assigned to vrf one two and you we'll set the interface uh to reach this prefix to be the virtual link assigned to vrf12 okay so we're going to save this okay let's check okay we are leaking from vrf12 to vrf13 the route map on vrf12 okay so we're going to add another one that's going to be in the source from 13 and we're going to configure the leak target to be one two and we're going to set the route map to be route map one three and we're going to set the interface to the virtual link on vrf one three going to save these changes and confirm that everything is okay so we are leaking from vrf one three to vrf run two whatever we have in this route map and that should be reachable via this link okay now let's confirm what is the output at this moment so if we look at a uh, router info bgp network okay we see that the bgp table for vrf12 has the subnet and one and two one and two that's okay and we are receiving the subnet 192.168.103 as well and that's the expected result on vrf13 we have the subnet 10.101.101 and we have the network 192.168 actually that's 101 from firewall 2. so if we take a look at firewall 2 uh, routing table uh, let's filter just using bgp and let me adjust the screen a little bit okay oh that's okay and we see that the subnet uh, between firewall 1 and firewall 3 is in the routing table of firewall 2 and also the network uh the service uh network that we need to reach so if 
we try to reach uh that network so that should be 192.168.131 there was a problem there let me do it again and it's reachable okay and we don't see any other network besides the one we are leaking uh from vrf 13 and from firewall 3 if we take a look at the routing table uh, router info bgp network we see the subnet 192.168.101 and the transport so we should be able to reach 192.168.101 as well and it's working as expected so and that's how we enable leaking on vrf using bgp i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one